Yeah, what's going on, man? It's Donnie Houston, representing what they talk about podcast, the voice of the South. I appreciate everybody uh, who's been tuning in, listening to us every week. If it's your first time listening, make sure you subscribe to us on the podcast app. If you have an Apple iPhone, look us up on the Apple Podcast app. What they talking about? No G on talking. B O U T. Follow us, subscribe, give us the five star rating, share with your friends and family the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? Download that SoundCloud app. Look us up on there. Follow us on Instagram, WTTB Podcast. Follow us on Facebook, WTTB Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, WTTB Podcast. You know what I'm saying? If you're interested in and want to be a sponsor or you um, have somebody that, you know, you think you might be a dope guest for the podcast, send us an email, WTTBPOD at gmail.com. Yeah, it's going down with they talking my podcast. It's Donnie Houston. I'm in here. Got my boy Devo. What's up? Lean. Yeah. And we got a special guest, man, the homie Michael Arsenault. What's going on, man? What up? Thank you for having me. I'm so hot. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, we got Mike, man. Mike's in town. Uh, Mike went to high school with us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Madison's finest. For sure, for sure. From the clock. From the you club. know what I mean? From the club. Um, Shout it out in the book. For yeah. sure. And yeah. the niggas of New York Times bestseller. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, hey, yeah. 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 My mom's still going to hit me with a Bible, but I appreciate y'all's support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. The book is I Can't Date Jesus. I uh, love <laughs> sex, family, race, and other reasons why I put my faith in Beyonce. <laughs> this, is, this is some funny ass shit. Thank you. <laughs> this is some funny shit. Oh, but uh, shit. man, we got Mike in town. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we gonna talk about the book and all that. But before we get into that, we can just uh, how was everybody's weekend and shit? Oh, weekend was weekend was legit. <clears throat> weekend was legit. Uh, I was a guest of Donnie's at the Slim Thug concert, 20th anniversary. Shouts out to Slim. You know, he started off at live week, then the week got a little. A little hectic for yeah, my boy. Yeah, they tried to get him out of here. Yeah, they tried to ride on my nigga Slim, but yeah. we ain't gonna get on that, man. Uh, the concert, man, he brought everybody out. He brought Young Style. That was a highlight of the night for, for me. me. Yeah. Uh, so now it was cool, man. Uh, that 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 was the you know then shit. We got the interview today with Mike. So you know we can we can straight. We ain't fucked up. Yeah, for sure, Charlene, sure, what you got into? My nah, mind was like, <clears throat> I low key hate. I missed it. Um. That Slim, Slim concert as a fellow North Sidian. Oh, uh, you North Sidian. Oh, yeah, right? they was in that day, too. I already know we was, bro. Like, yeah, because the thing for me, like, like I didn't learn under a lot of this Swisher House shit until we was just on the road this last okay. weekend. Like, He's it, running it, through it the show, was, and I'm like, okay. It was the right, thing, you know, like, that, that 98, 9 by 2005 era, like, it was something. Like, see, we were still, it was, we it was still was, flexing. It was, yeah. And I came from I ain't know shit about it because I we was we was still jamming screw at the same time on our side of town. It was it was it was a toss well, up between y'all knew better. Y'all knew better. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you can't deny good music and good shit. You know what I'm saying? But like yeah, so like <clears throat> me and my niggas we used to see like them eyes and how was like our school used to play a uh, big act. That's what uh, Slim went. Um, we used to sli see Slim coming down with that uh, that old um, green. Cadillac, you know what I'm saying? This before the candy paint, <laughs> with, with 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 a with a big bullhorn with on that motherfucker. On he that, used to yeah. rap about the shit. He probably put up some pictures of it. We didn't seen it, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, I remember seeing that shit. You know what I'm saying? I remember <clears throat> seeing the come up. I remember hearing them first freestyles and all that. You know mm. what I'm saying? So yeah, to see what that nigga done, done, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then to get to where he is yeah, now, yeah, twenty years in the game. That's strong. Mm. That's real. And, and yeah, he he from you know what I'm saying the streets where shit. He was, he was the I, first I one. I ain't gonna lie. He was the first one that made me embrace the Swisher House. You know what I mean? I was like, damn, this nigga's going hard. You know what I mean? Like, he could be from the South Side. You know what hey, I mean? But, but even though a, I missed that whole uh, shout out to that nigga Rico, that nigga put up damn near everything uh, the niggas missed. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, man, when I got to the you. house that evening, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I had some other shit going on. By the time I got to the house, 
scrolling through that gram, and nigga then, then live to everything. So I didn't caught the, the 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 recap of everything that went down. That whole that whole looked like that it was shit live, was live my nigga. as fuck, bro. Yeah, like yeah. that was a that was a really 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 good concert, man. Really great way to celebrate twenty years. You know what I'm saying? So salute to my boy Slump Thugger. You know what I'm saying? Twenty years in the game is going down. Um, but yeah. Mike, what's up, man? What's going no, on? I'm good. Shit, nigga, I'm I ain't seen you in. I don't know how long. I ain't man. seen a rat in a week. Um, <laughs> a white person in Harlem trying to make a black friend. I'm good. I'm, home. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Went to Papa Do's. I'm for good. Yeah. Oh, yo, yeah. He came to the city. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got it. I mean, you got to do that. You know what I mean? I miss nigga those. Y'all don't understand. They can't make food like that. You went to the one at 16. Yes. Oh, you got to go yeah. to the one at 16. Yeah. You you going somewhere else, man. You cheating yourself out the Houston experience, man. I'll yeah. say one thing about the nigga those, though. My my food has never been <laughs> never been fucked up there. Like I've always got my food on time. It's always been, unless you Man, know I always I, cook the shit right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I ain't never had a problem. Always more though. alcohol than actual anything else. See, that's I what I'm saying, it. man. Black folks just find a reason to complain. Nigga, that was just the shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Show man, so all right, so uh, man, what's been going on, man? You know, uh, just, like I said, we all went to high school together, but shit, that was years ago. We ain't got to say how long. You know what I mean? But. No, just the book finally came out. It was a long time coming. Uh, people thought I was going to be like, I don't know, the pride pick of the month. And <laughs> as I tried to tell them I was like the Cardi B of lit. I was like, trust me, it's country as fuck. It's, it's very black, but people will like it. Don't worry, white people will be fine. And then... Niggas like it. White people are bonded. I made the list. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very big deal for me. So hopefully I won't die poor. Um, that's actually the <laughs> title too. But no, the book is done. I've been very pleasantly surprised because it was. It took a very long time to get the book sold because people were basically like, "You're cute, but I don't want to fuck." And <laughs> people wanted me to be like the Bernie Sanders of sissies. They wanted me to be like the Ta-Nehisi Coates um, for gays. I just wanted to write the book I wanted to write. So people were kind of like weary. Black people were actually harder on me than the white people in publishing. And ain't but three people in publishing. But no, the book is out. It's doing well. I'm, I'm happy. So um, how, long, how long have you been working on this? Like I've been, been trying a- to get a book uh, eight years ago, I was trying to, I wrote a proposal, uh, five years ago, I was actively pursuing like an agent. I literally didn't get a, a book deal actually until last year. And I didn't get a lot of money up front, which was anticlimactic as fuck. Cause I was like, you were supposed to help me pay off my loans. This is not happening. That actually worked out <laughs> right in the end because they, they underestimated me. So book so two, I made a lot more money. Yeah. No, I, I have an advantage now. Like I literally, they thought, Oh, diversity, blah, blah, blah. And like, no, I can actually make money if you pimp me out right. So <laughs> I, I've been getting really Snake nice Christ. looks. Yeah. <laughs> now we're trying to get the book made into a show. So I go to LA this week. I'm uh, not sure. Oh, yeah, that's about dope. That, so, because that's, that's the real money. Because yeah, right yeah, on the yeah, internet, yeah. it's you'll die poor. I'm, I want actual money. So yes, no shit. to TV. But yeah, people are interested. That's dope. That's dope. So how did you how did you get to this point of writing a book? Was it something you always wanted to do? Was it something you just been jotting down over the years? I never wanted to be a full time writer because I, I didn't want to hate myself. Um, but that's what happened. Um, I always knew I wanted to write books. I knew I wanted to write a book, so I had been trying to. Um, a couple years ago, like honestly, literally, black people just didn't start the same way. Black people were back on TV again. It's the same way with books. Like niggas were not getting book deals. Yeah. And if they were, it'd be like three dollars or you were like Kevin Hart and you actually got some money. <laughs> so literally within yeah. the last three years is that maybe when like they were like, Oh wait, we can probably make money off of black people again, like it was the nineties. Do you think it was attributed to cause I'm I look at a lot of your articles that you yeah. you write online, so you gotta think like that online following, that popularity. Do you think it could have been attributed to these past cause of the social unrest and then that that has helped. Um, and then writing for more white people help, which I hate to say that, but that's what it was. Like, I don't value white people more than black people, but people value mainstream outlets more. So when you put stuff in those spaces, people want to fuck with you. It just, it's kind of the way it is. It shouldn't be that way, but that is what it is. But I think a lot of that has to do with like the climate has changed. Like people are protesting, people are like, Actively advocating right. sweet potato Saddam as president, so like, like they want diverse voices. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Run that back. What did you call sweet potato Saddam? I don't like saying his name. <laughs> so I got like a whole list of names. It's in the book. Um, call the stick of sweet, sweet potato, potato Saddam, Saddam is my favorite. But yeah, I think uh, I think times changed, so that helped. But like I know people who got like a shit ton of money for the first book. I did not get that. But um, with this with this backing that you done got with this book, yeah, like. I will actually probably earn royalties if 
all goes to plan. Like nice. I'm actually exceeding the expectations. Like I know for a fact, they didn't think I would make the list. So like I'm on the list. Like don't get me wrong, my editor fuck with me. He was like, be patient. I know you're not getting exactly what you want, but like trust it. So I knew I had to take it. Cause I kept getting basically a lot of maybes. So I'd have these two hour meetings and the people were like, oh, you're so great. And they would tell my agent, yeah, he's great, but make him write something else. So right. people really just wanted to consume me like <laughs> another way. And I, I think being gay, they want to be like, oh, you're gay and black, everybody hates you. And so right. they wanted me to be like a sad gay. And that's not really how I. So they want to the pigeonhole yeah. you into something that they feel comfortable <laughs> they presenting wanted, out there. They wanted moonlight, but like with me cutting my wrist. Um, so I was going to be able to give that. I like Moonlight, but you, you know, that was a sad movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sad as shit. So I wrote the book. I wrote a book basically that they expect usually of white people, but very, very much a nigga from Harm Clark. It, I think it, you read it in the book, even if I don't, that might be what I give, but it's, it's very, people who are from Houston who have been reading it like, know what wow. time it is. And they actually made me take more shit out. Like I had very specific streets, restaurants, businesses. They're like, legally, you got to take some of this out. So like, it was, mm. for me, it was, it was like, I wanted to write exactly how I talk. Yeah. So that was a pushback, but yeah, I'm grateful. They're happy. I'm about to sell book two, but that's called, I don't want to die poor about my issues with student Okay, life. so is this a series of, of um, books you already... This is That's a chapter in the book. Yeah, I allude to dying poor, and I want to... So I wrote something for the New York Times early in the year about, like, just I have private student loans. I basically pay, like, a mortgage a month in loans. So, yeah, life ain't always the best when you have to do shit like that, but the, the shit did really well. So what I'm trying to do is, like, write an extension of that in the book. Oh, That's shit, a little okay. bit more broadly, so that will give me money to actually pay them shits off. <laughs> Like, hey man, the dog boy shit came from the nigga with the feeling suit. Yeah. In the book. Can mm -hmm. you get in the book? The nigga yeah, with the feeling yeah. suit. Who told me I was gonna die poor and fuck me up? Right, you gotta tell that story. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, they ain't written. They, they ain't written. Some nigga in a feeling su uh, suit. So <laughs> when I moved out, like, nigga in a feeling suit. <laughs> and I was like riding the bus. This shit is wild. Some girl. She was real nice. She would try to like. I think she was like your talent. So let me just be nice to you. Yeah. So that was nice. And I'm not really good with taking shit from people. I'm prideful. Like, what do you want? So I ended up in some Sadidi restaurant in LA that people like um, crustaceans. So they say you walk on water, but that's really like you walk on a fountain, whatever. Yeah. You sit down there like niggas like the fucking noodles. I don't give a fuck. But I took it there to like show to be thankful. Like thank right. you for being so nice to me. Some nigga in the fila suit just sat down at the um, the table and was like, "Do you know Brad Ford?" When he found out I was from Houston, who the fuck is Brad Ford? I don't know. And then all of a sudden he's like, what do you do for a living? And I told him a writer, you're not supposed to really tell people in a place like LA that you write for a living. Cause niggas will me to be like, you should write my life story. You should write yeah. my TV show. You should write my movie. Cause everybody out there in the industry. Fuck. <laughs> so literally for like 20 minutes, this nigga's telling me his life story, <laughs> telling me why I should write his life story. And then the, the, it wasn't a lot of black people in there. So the, the waitress never came back to the table. She just assumed we knew each other. And so for like 20 minutes, I'm talking to him and then finally, and I like, I couldn't tell he was going to get violent. So I like pulled the, the glass next to me just in case I had to crack him real quick and start fighting. <laughs> it was a big nigga. Um, <laughs> so I was ready. Um, and then I'm high now, so I'm fucking this up. But literally by the end, I was like, I don't care. And he was like, well, fine, die poor. And then he started yelling at me about like dying poor. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then the waitress finally came and was like, I thought that was your father. <laughs> Bitch, I don't know him. <laughs> and then after that, literally, so it's, it's a restaurant like in Beverly Hills. It was an Asian band and they started singing Wade in the Water. So after this random man like <laughs> left, it's the Asian, some Asian was like, we're alive, man. Yeah. Like, Wade in the Water. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, I pay to see. So it was like steamed crabs, garlic noodles, a nigga in a fila suit, and an Asian woman singing Wade in the Water. <laughs> <laughs> that was what it was like for me living in LA. Yes. That's All right, so look here. Shit. I'm, I'm going to be a thousand percent honest with you. When uh, Dunn hit us up saying that we was interv interviewing you, I really didn't have a clue who you were. You know That's saying? fine. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't no expect disrespect. people to. Uh, but he they, they, he told me uh, about the he, he said the uh, the book. I don't. Uh, no, I'm not I famous. No, so no, I, no, you wouldn't I, know me. No, no, I can't date Jesus. When he said that, I was like, oh, I didn't heard that book. No, that like, made me feel good because yes, people posting about this shit. Please yeah, keep yeah, doing I, that. I had heard yeah. about it. So after that, you know, what I'm saying I did my my due diligence, did, did, uh, did research with that. But if you don't mind, could you give you know, what I'm saying us for the the people and the listeners who aren't aware who you are, okay. could you give us a backdrop? You know, what I'm saying of of how you even got to this point of, uh, of being an author, a bestseller author. I'm a writer, so I write for Al Gore's internet, uh, mostly freelance contract work. So I've basically written for a lot of different sites, Ebony, the New York Times, um, 
Gawker Wire, Essence, um, Mike, Complex, uh, X, Double XL, Vibe, like Washington Post. Like I've written a lot for a lot of people. Okay. So I write a lot about pop culture and politics, but um, in the last few years, I wanted to write my own book. So like MSNBC, like stuff like that, that helped me build enough to the point where I could actually sell a book. Again, gotcha. not for the money I deserve, but it's coming. This is the wrong motherfuckers about that. Because people always ask me money. I was like, yeah. I, Cut that shit, so. man. It's shit. a natural process. Yeah. So like, yeah, I don't assume people know who I like. You have to like be writing for the internet is very specific. Right, right. So like, if you read that online, you might be familiar because it's not mostly a lot of black folks. Right, it's right, like right, right. Black dudes, but um, yeah. And then I sold the book and. The book is helping people know who I am. You might have to start sending your emails like with the tagline, still a nigga from the clock to remind them. I, <laughs> I, I, tweet, I actually tweeted that a week ago. So yes, I'm <laughs> trying to remind people. Not too much. Um, <laughs> not too much. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, we're going to introduce Peas. We got my boy Peas in here. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Birthday, boy. Happy birthday, yeah, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey. Hey. Sorry, I'm late, brother. Call troubles, all types of things, but I'm here, man. Hey, man. Already. 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 Hey, hey, man, I don't even know if you know, but we tweeted tweeted each other before because you wrote something on Chris Brown uh, album review. I can't remember which one it did was, you, but did, not the most did you recent come one. My neck? Um, no, no, no oh, okay. I agree with oh, you. Okay. No, I agree. Chris Brown has to stab me, including my niece. Oh, I oh. Oh, no, <laughs> man. We don't want Breezy to go. I like that. Oh yeah, nah. I no. thought it was a good review, and I had gave you no, props, and it, it was Thank just you. like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So for sure, we we wish him well and bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> Already, uh, <laughs> already. So, man, uh, yeah, no okay, let's just go into the book, man. So, you know, I can't date Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That's uh-huh. obviously tied to a religious thing. There's obviously right. a conflict there. You know what I'm saying? So, can we kind of just talk about that? I can't date Jesus. Is basically a subtweet to my mom. So, my mom is a wonderful person. I wouldn't be able to do this without her. I'm obsessed with my mom. Um, she's an old school Catholic. She thinks. I'm born gay, but basically I'm like in a regular gene that they sell at like C. Lee Conroe or Katie Mills. So it's like you're born gay, but you like deficient. So you shouldn't act on it because you may, might make God angry and go to hell. And so the I Can't Date Jesus title is basically based on a conversation we've had. She's known I'm, I was gay for a long time. She actually used to drag me as a kid. She was like, I'm sure some people make fun of the way you walk and talk. I was like, they don't, but girl, do you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she clocked me early, but then when I, we, I think in 2014, I was starting sort of to get recognized. Like Arsenal is common here, but it ain't common elsewhere. Right. I look just like her. So I was in like Essence. So like my picture was in it. So like she getting her hair done, niggas gonna be like, oh, is that your son? Yeah. He looked just mm-hmm. like you. So I was trying to let her know, like some people are gonna like maybe see. And so she was like, well, I know you can't help it, but if you die and get hit by a bus, if you get hit by a bus and die, you might go to hell. And I was like, well, girl, what you want me to do? I can't date Jesus. So um, <laughs> that's basically where that came from. She has not read the book and she probably won't. Oh man. So you, has anybody in the family read the book? My mom's sisters have read the book. Um, they said I was respectful to my parents and yeah. Cause they said was, you weren't or were? I were, I was. Okay. So okay. I, I tried to be very delicate with my parents, like um, my next door neighbor is in the room. So I'm sure yeah. he, my house was um, loud. Um, my dad <laughs> is an interesting person. Yeah. Shouts it, out to Doc. It man. wasn't the nicest um, house. It was a lot happening in there. So I wrote about that. But I was um, very honest about my dad. Mm-hmm. I was forgiving why he is the way he is, why my mom is the way that he is. But I come from a place of like, you don't tell your business. Right. 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 Information is a weapon. And she basically yeah, worried about white folks using it on me. So I get it. But. Um, they all kept secrets and they crazy as fuck. So I wanted to like be different and be a little less crazy. So yeah. I wrote about them, but I tried to be fair. Okay. That's an interesting yeah. thing because it's kind of I think that's kind of like a general consensus in the black household, just in general. We don't talk about it. Yeah, we talk about it. Take and keep it in house. Yeah, because it becomes an issue, and then I think like our generations are kind of like, nah, we, we need to know about what the fuck is going on. You know what I, I'm saying? I wanted to be a different arsenal. Um, I come from a long line of crazy, so keeping shit in wasn't the move for me but yeah my dad ain't gonna read it but we're better now as good yeah. as, as good as it can be you yeah, yes. um, shout out to doc though you were saying your dad uh like the first uh kind of encounters with like the gay thing was like with your uncle dying yeah um i found out after the fact and i mentioned later in the book um my dad actually didn't give a fuck that my uncle was gay but i think when he died he was angry and Again, you live, you know, when he's angry, you, you hear it. 
So he reacts and he reacted basically yelling faggot, 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 faggot. So if I'm six years old and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I like boys. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, am I a faggot? Do you die? That was my association. So that was my immediate thought. But then my sister actually told me while I was writing the book, so I ended up changing um, the chapter. She's like, no, he used to live with us. He didn't care. And then I mentioned how one of my cousins she saw me in some video I did for BET mm-hmm. where I was like, um, for my coming out story, cause being Mary Jane had a gay character. She went up to my dad and was like, oh, I heard your son's a gay and it's your fault cause you were alcoholic. And so my oh, dad man. didn't call me. I think he knew better. Um, believe it or not, I, he crazy, but we you don't want them problems either. Um, <laughs> he called my sister and was like, I don't care if he gay. I love my son. I just want to be happy. I was like, that old nigga said that. (laughs) (laughs) She was like, yes. I was like, he talked like that. I was like, oh, that was nice. So yeah, um, he's better about that than my mom is actually. I I genuinely don't think my dad really cares. Mm. It's more like, you all right? Do I got to cut somebody? You good? Mm-hmm. Okay, bye. And he hangs up, and he talks like ninety-five miles an hour. Yeah, so, yeah. fast as shit. Hey, that boy, you all right? No, no, no. You got anybody? You need any money? No, no, no. Who fuck with you? Like we be fucking with something like. Boy, I love you, my nigga. Bye. Like Click. the black boom. <laughs> like what's what's the nigga name on the King of the Hill? Uh, boom house. Yes, he does. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it is. Like, I didn't realize he looks like Cat Williams. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad has never been on a plane. So the one and only time he's been on a plane was to see me graduate from Howard. Mm-hmm. My mom gave him a tranquilizer so he could be still on the plane. Well, Hilarious. No, my dad cannot be still. Fucking no, he's hilarious. never still. He never yeah. still, like yeah. he, he is always moving. My dad is never still, so he had to take a tranquilizer. And he went to the hotel. He's in his plaits. He like combing his hair. Um, he got his hand in his wallet. It's like nobody's gonna stab you in DC. Um, <laughs> then, although I got jumped, jacked at gunpoint in DC. And when I called my mom, the first thing I said is I could have got robbed at home for free. Um. <laughs> but when I was in DC, literally every couple of me like, "Yo, pops are like Cat Williams," and I actually couldn't watch Cat Williams videos for a while because I kept getting angry and I didn't realize why. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, that nigga look like my pops. <laughs> so now I can enjoy my main piece. But yeah. Oh shit! All right, so you uh, you were saying in the book like when you uh, like your dad kind of approached you about it. Yeah, and yeah he, he was, was like, like, "Funny, are you funny?" And, and I said, I'm "That sounds like him. Jesus and he's Christ." Like, you funny? <laughs> I'm hilarious. What are you asking me? <laughs> now, how old were you when he asked you this? Uh, had to be like 21, 22. Okay. Maybe no more than 23. Early 20s. Okay, okay. Yeah. He, so you've grown by this point. He randomly asked, yes. And I was just like, I'm hilarious. And then we got into it. But, you know. <laughs> that shit was funny. Now, was now like I said, we all went to school together. So growing up, how was it as far as your peers? Like I knew I was gay in six. I feel like y'all knew I was gay. Um, I just was fighting it. So you know, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I knew you was gay. Yeah, I mean, we we knew, but it was not it was my issue. It was my issue. It took a while. But oh, okay. I should have came out sooner because I realized I wouldn't have went to college. I wouldn't have went to college for free. I literally just left my friend Raya from my, uh, yeah, Raya, Raya. Yeah. She's okay. not even a real gay person, but I won her like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Shout out to Raheem. Shout out to Raheem. That's a little silly shit. I owe her like twenty, thirty thousand dollars. I wrote her scholarships for like the gay people scholarships, and she, I wrote her essays. And, and she, she reneged. Won. Yeah, she got her. Yeah, and she won. She won like thirty thousand dollars. She got her husband. So they were right here married, right? Oh well, yeah, or that ain't that ain't ending well. No, well, we, <laughs> we should got the thirty thousand. <laughs> so I wrote her scholarships, but if I had wrote the shit for myself, I would have went to free. for free. Howard ain't cheap. Uh, nah, Howard ain't cheap. I would have went to UT for free. Not Howard. I'm in debt. Oh man! So I should have came out sooner, and I would actually would have cashed in. Fucking Yeah, you could have got that Longhorn Be opportunity yourself. scholarship Don't for sure. Yes, it's a big. Oh man, y'all got to read that. Can't die party. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So we always talk about the. Um, the LGBTQ, like it's, it's a lot of letters. every week, you know I what I mean? Know. But you call it the LGBTQ SWV. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read jack- that shit, I said, man, this nigga crazy, I'm man. I'm a jackass. <laughs> like, it, they just add letters, so I just feel like, if I can honor that, the community, and my favorite thought box group, so it's Thought fun. box group. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, real shit, yeah. They, a lot of their music, the if you listen to I it, yeah, they running up on somebody, man. That whole is about fucking your niggas. Like, they that's stayed talking about another nigga. 
they, they running up on you, nigga. SWV. I am yeah. Yeah. somebody <laughs> else's guy. Yeah. <laughs> These feelings I that, that I have though, for you, so I can't. Them niggas was jamming on some hell yeah shit, man. Oh man. Yeah. 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 All right, so um. That rain? Yeah, that's right. We need it too. Shit. It's been raining for like the last like We need it though. Episodes, See, like, every time we do a cut, I'm about to say every time we do a cast lately, the rain gonna do it. Yeah. Them yeah. whole ass mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I mean this is Houston, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What it is. So you moved to LA after yeah. after after uh coming home. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to tell some of these stories about the Houston thing, going to the club and all that shit, because that shit was wild. You know what I mean? Like, once you kind of got to the point where you was like, all right, fuck it, I'm going to explore this shit. Yeah, um, gay clubs are interesting. Um, I had to be more comfortable, but they were fun. Um, Just learn how to be a thought. That's what a lot of the book is about. (laughs) Not worry about going to hell. Not, like, peace. not dying of AIDS, not going to hell. Just be a thigh and be happy. Like Coco from SWV. Yeah, yeah she, <laughs> she, 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 made, she made a good career. Yeah, without the diseases, no shame. But yes, um, that was a goal. The clubs were fine. Like in Houston, it was a little bit different. I realized more, I think I realized leaving, living in different places just beyond just that part. But Houston is a lot more diverse than most cities I've been to. Like I think the South gets a real bad rep. Like New York and LA are the most racist cities I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. Um, and even in terms of like queer people, like he, the South is a lot more united than, cause everything is really separate in New York and LA. Like it's very specific, like everything that you right, go to. Right. Like even if you're straight, like I hate how in LA they used to be like go below the 10, which I guess they mean the hood, but like I would not even see black couples in LA unless I went like to South Central or like Inglewood right. and or see like and there's no mix between like the thing about the South like I can hang out in Third Ward and be fun when you go to LA shit like in Inglewood or whatever people like look for a problem mm. so even that like and if you don't if you go there and people know you're not from there you gotta worry about that but then if you go to Hollywood you know they can be racist just and the gay spots can be real racist so it's it's interesting like learning them spaces I, I, but I, I always I always wondered about that like you're already dealing with discrimination due to sexuality but then yeah. once you go over into the you know the, the queer world yeah. then you gotta deal like okay now I you gotta get the racism white, the white people don't have to be but yes um, wait damn I gotta sell books <laughs> I take that back so hold on um, <laughs> we love everybody keep buying my book um, <laughs> what I write about in the book though is that it's it's not so much like I don't it's not I don't care about white people it's just usually particularly like if you're gay and black and you write online or you write in, in media you're usually asked to write about white people not liking you right so my issue with that is like if you don't fuck with me you don't fuck with me but like why am I gonna care so much about what a white person thinks right because mm-hmm. if I base my the way I look at myself on a white person's point of view I'm gonna go crazy no. so that's what I mean like I don't care about white people but like so that's usually expected of me so I write about in the book like having me to be subjective to that and I wrote about how like I tried to write about um dating non-black folks which was different for me watching posts and then this woman just kept trying to change everything and like watching rewriting my shit and at one point because I mentioned like my, my friend said your dream nigga is like in Louis, Louisiana drinking Hennessy so I put in the thing and she was like I think that's a bit stereotypical I was like but that's I'm, real though I but like, it's real I was like I'm black and my last name is Arsenault do you really think I'm gonna be objecting to somebody in Louisiana drinking Hennessy so yeah, but that's, 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 that's plausible that. that's like I don't wanna deal with like some racist editors so yeah <laughs> That was long winded, but I think I answered. No, no, no. You, you got yeah. that. I always wondered about that. Like I said, I wondered like what what the unity is or what the climate is because of course you you, you share a common goal. Of- first, no matter what I'm doing, I'm black first. That's what people right. see first. It's, it's crazy because we had this we had this talk. We uh had uh, Donnie's cousin Marcus on, and mm-hmm. we were having these same similar discussions, and we mm-hmm. we were asking we questions like, hey, thing, like. Yeah. You know, even dealing with the police, like how it is in <laughs> the same way you're at, it's, it's the same thing. So now I'm starting to understand a little bit more. Man, you know? I, I've been pulled over. I know how to, it's the same principle. You get shot either way. <laughs> That's crazy. It's fucked up, but it's yeah. facts though. Yeah. That's crazy. And so, um, you out one time, you got robbed and shit. That was just once, and that wasn't even my fault. It was a nigga I was with. I told that nigga not to park on the project. Like, no, I literally was like, don't park here. They're going to rob you. You look like El DeBarge. They know, they know I'm from, they bother me, nigga. They're going to rob, and then I turned around. It was a gun in his face. It was a gun in mine. I was like, oh, shit. 
Like this, st- and I had already like I had some health issues, which is why I ended up having an extra in college. Like I had literally blacked out the day before, yeah. so but I'm, I was already like whatever. I was drunk. I'm like I'm fine. I, and then I turned around like a gun in my face, like ain't this a bitch? I was like I'm the worst <laughs> date ever. Like literally, I passed out in front of the nigga, and now like we get robbed. <laughs> But I told the niggas like we just pay twenty dollars to park because they're gonna rob us here because this is old DC before the white people really oh, took okay, over. Okay, okay. So we were on Northeast outside Love the Club, rest in peace. Yeah, and we got robbed, and thankfully I just gave him my wallet and not my phone because he took his phone. And he didn't take the rental, but I was just like in the car. I was like, nigga, you told me you get robbed all the time, and now you passing that shit on to me. So when I called my mom, I just was like, hey, can you cancel my credit cards? And then she called me the next day. She was like, you were really calm. I was like, yeah, because I could have got robbed home. I could have got robbed at home for free. I just <laughs> took out a loan. I just literally had to take out another loan. I was like, I went into debt to get jacked. That could have happened in Houston. Dude, you know? Shit. But I was, that actually was fine. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the first time I seen the gun. You, you met my father. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. Y'all got some shit? Nah, I just, I, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. imagine. I'm just thinking like, yeah, being robbed at gunpoint, especially when you told old buddy. So, why didn't he want to pay the $20 is what I want to know. I think that nigga was being cheap and I listened. I was just stupid. It was actually worse because after I, we went back to the hotel and I just literally wanted to file a police report just in case my credit cards got stolen. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, long after the fact, somebody stole my social security number in Cali. Some construction shit. worker. So damn, you know, I'm, I'm aware of that shit. So yeah, and then the woman came to, it was a black cop. She didn't like Howard people because she was from D.C. So a lot of <clears throat> D.C. natives don't like Howard folks. They just yes, I was in Atlanta like with going to Morehouse, some same thing, yeah. And she's literally just complaining about Howard people. I'm like, can you just finish the report? Because I just got robbed and I really don't care if you don't like Howard people. Thank you. But so it was just bullshit after bullshit. So I was just like laughing at it the whole night. Damn. But it was because of that curly head nigga that we got. Right? <laughs> Hilarious. Hey, I was watching one of them interviews, uh, one of them Deezus and Mero interviews. Um, and I think you said, I, I, I don't want to misquote you. You said something to the effect that uh, black women have been more influential. Yes. In, in your up, in your development and your yeah. growth as a man than black men have. Right. With, I guess, the relationship that you and your mother has had and knowing that your old man has been a part of your upbringing, who and why is this? Who 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 are your um the people who who influence you? Who are yeah. the women who influence you? And and why is this the case? I, uh, um, I I I love him. I love my dad, but he was a uh, he's a complicated person. So I didn't grow up in the nicest house. So um, you judge people how they treat you and they treat your mother so I, was, I, I mean i write more in the book but that's okay. essentially the, okay. the issue so he wouldn't have been my guidance on how to be like a man he was there but i don't know you i i, I think i just learned from black women what strengths can look like i think you're typically because i'm gay so by default i'm seen as like compared to women in terms of like patriarchy and like a stereotype so i don't necessarily believe that but that's the idea so what i had learned from like my dad is like og i guess like he's a, you know, very much a nigga, All right. and people will probably associate strength with him. And while I think he's a strong person, I actually think my mom is much stronger because it's different to be a woman to kind of go through this stuff. She's gone through, dealt with someone like him, mm-hmm. and actually be the the stronger of the two. Like people would be more scared of my dad. I'm like, you should watch for my mom because I'm actually going to actually kill you. <laughs> so yeah, just from that. And then the thing is, like, um, straight men. You know, it's better now, but. Straight men typically don't associate with gay men. So like, if you're trying to learn like about yourself, like, and, and for me, it was like my access to pop culture. I didn't grow up with money. So what I looked at on TV is what I found. And like right, right. the images of gay men weren't that great. So if I saw like a woman, at least communicating in some capacity, something I've actually felt, even mm-hmm. if it's not exactly the same, even if I'm not a woman, like, you know, that was for me what, they just kind of taught me a lot about myself and things that, right. cause I think, the same stereotypes that are like sex, sexism, the way it affects women is ultimately an extension of homophobia. Mm-hmm. So like a related to a degree. And so like for me understanding that, like seeing how my dad treated my mom or seeing how dudes treat women and watching women talk, I'm like, it's not the exact same thing, but there's something I can relate to. So that was just kind of my connection. There have been other men that like been influential. Like there's certain things about my dad I respect and take from, but yeah, he wasn't the best point of reference growing up. Gotcha. And so I immediately kind of disassociated from that because that really wasn't for me do you think that 
Do you think? Because it was it was interesting to me because I used to for a while. I mean, I don't I don't really be on it now, but for a while I used to think like about the being born gay versus being like a learned behavior type thing. Yeah. Do you think that if your dad was uh, more into your life, you know, what I'm saying the right way. Do you That's, think that you're my mother? Um, <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm just, <laughs> no, just, no, no, just, no, just no, for uh, conversation no, purposes. Um, no, you're born like t- you're born gay. There's right. plenty of species that are like have homosexual activity. Like it's not a thing. Right. No, no, I, I believe no, no, that no. you are now because I was listening and yeah. to me it was the stories with the the cotton and all that shit. I'm like, damn, like, no, nah, it's for real. You know, no, what I get why like, you ask that because I think my literally my mom thinks it's her fault. She literally said that the other day to me. It's like hmm. we didn't talk about me being a New York Times bestseller author. She's worried about me going to hell and, and that. I think if you grow up with chaos and trauma. One thing I wanted to do is like write about my life, but not lean into that. Cause that's people were like, Oh, that's why you're that way. It's like, right. that has nothing to do with it. Yeah. I literally grew up in the nicest house. I still would have been the same thing. That has nothing to do with it. Right. Literally my mom's brother. Well, oh shit. But yes, it's a bunch <laughs> of gay around me. Like literally with him, it's genetic. Like my brother's gay. Like I know plenty of gay siblings. Like it's, it's just a bunch of niggas is gay. <laughs> <laughs> that is the title of the show. Niggas is gay. Thank yeah. you, Mike. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. That's, that's yeah. just what it is. Yeah, so. That's real. That's real. Yeah. And I think maybe because of my dad, I had certain associations, but yeah, it just, it would have been that either way. I wish my mom would get that, but yeah. yeah. She, no, I, I get it. Cause it I was, I'm listening to the stories. I'm like, no, this is a natural thing. You know? know what I mean? Like to be a kid that young and kind of yeah. already be on that. Cause when I was a kid, I'm thinking like, I was trying to see what the girls was on. Like, like you knew right. what you liked. Yeah, and right. I realized that wasn't it. Um, right. Up the street at La Petite, I learned. Um, yeah, yeah, you said La Petite with me. I had to take La Petite out legally. I couldn't. Oh, okay. okay. Well, so, we was there together. Yeah. Well, now they know. <laughs> Shit, we all was there. He yeah. was there too. Yeah, we was all there. Shout yeah. out. Yeah. Damn, yeah, take that Y'all out later. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, they care. That's couldn't damn. Name La Petite, okay. Could name Fiesta, could name Kroger, Food Aroma. I had to take all that out. Yeah, uh, uh, I was wondering because you were saying the store around such yeah. and such, and I'm thinking like that's Fiesta, that's but Futurama. I, that's but I, they went, they 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 made me take it out. They were like extra cautious. annoying. But yeah, it's fine. I don't want to get sued. So yeah, right, right, for sure, for sure. Um, I, want, I, I want to ask because after the title. The Beyonce thing. Explain yeah. the, the, this Beyonce <laughs> yeah, thing. Because this, this has been going on for years. I know since high school. I know that for shit show since high school. So I've been on. Um, yeah. so I just, <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. I, I, I mean, I like Beyonce just because I've been the whole time. Um, but I write in a book like um, the feminine parts of myself I wasn't comfortable with because you're not you're told not to be that way. Because like yeah. my dad is my dad. You're not encouraged to be that way. My mom's not super girly either. So like it's just niggas in the house. Um, like she's very feminine but like in the like I would kind of like Eve yeah. but like save um, yeah. she would definitely <laughs> shoot you and hit you with the bible um, so I think Beyonce when I came out finally and was going to clubs and stuff the B-Day album came out it was a lot of like sissy shit in that it was a lot of southern it was a lot of subcultures in there so that like made me more comfortable So just that was the album when she really went yeah. to the women yeah. like she really started catering yeah. the women on that album but it was like so much like the, like they were uh, gaming choreographing it helping with the things it was like a lot of slang i don't think people caught up on but i knew what they were doing so or was learning so like she for that period of time i just associate the album with me becoming more comfortable and i think just overall she's just a country as black person from houston Mm -hmm. and i think so often particularly black people are if you're told if you want to reach a certain level of success no matter what it is you need to dilute who you are to cater to the masses and cater to white people so i've definitely been told before you you sound too black take this out um, or you're too black and you can't sell this. So, you know, outside of maybe half of this I Am Sasha Fist album, Beyonce's been a nigga from Houston the whole time. Yep. And I don't think people n- know that unless you're like from Houston or get it. So for me, like I associate, if you just, who if you do what you do and you're really good at it, you can pull people to you. You don't have mm-hmm. to dilute who you are to pull white people to you. So for me, that is another reason why like I'm just, yeah, I'm from Houston. We don't have that many references. So like when I thought about getting out and associating with certain things, like I associated that with her and yeah, I try to keep certain things like that. Cause literally if I, if I had wrote a different book, I would have got more money sooner and it would have came out sooner, but it wouldn't have been this book true yeah, to you. and it wouldn't have been true to me and it wouldn't have done, I don't think it would have done as well. So everything worked out the way it was supposed to, but yeah, she is for me like a guiding example about how to move in. Somehow we got to make sure Beyonce get a copy of this I'm book. I'm actively working on that. Um, have you okay. met her or anything like that? I have met her before. Um, <clears throat> briefly, I mentioned that towards the end of the book, but 
we're actively working on trying to get that to her because I think her people are aware of it. It's just about getting it to her. Okay. No. That would be dope. I think I just need to f- give it to Miss Tina. Oh yeah, That's, Tina, Tina, pull up all the people. I want to give it to Solange. Solange, mate. I'm, I'm, work, I'm trying to work those three different. Have you, I'm have you mailed it to, to any uh, I'm available it, addresses that they have out? I'm sending it to the right person at Parkwood, but okay. there might be other ways to go about that. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. Got to make sure we. Yeah. I'm trying to let other people do the work for me because. Oh. Hey, I saw you said you wanted to rap, right? You, you, you wanted to. You wanted I'm to not going to freestyle because no, I, I, I ain't looking like, for you to freestyle. <laughs> but I, I, saw, I saw, like I said, the show that you was on earlier. They said they'll pay for your studio time or whatever. And they, I, they got money though, so I'm. They have been very supportive, but I'm. I'm finna ask them for the showtime money for studio time. I really want to be like the gay future. I'm Dunny, really Dunny, mad. Dunny. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so mad. I'm not Look at Danny Houston. You think you, you think you can whip up something yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for we Mikey? Can put it together. I, I, yeah. I was so mad. One time my friend said I was too smart to be a rapper. I was like. That's the rudest bullshit you ever said to me. Fuck, Fuck you. <laughs> Two Chain is smart. Like I can rap. A lot of these rappers out here that's smart. smart. I know. Yeah. I can you know just mumble. Plaz is a smart nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like my. He's a nurse. Nurse Plaz. <laughs> <laughs> you big man. <laughs> you know what? No, I did want to get to this. It's something I I either read or you said it online because I'll follow you, of course. Who was it that went to school with us that said this slick shit about you? Oh, no. Or working no. at Burger King or McDonald's yes. or some shit like yeah. that? Yeah. I actually, um, I combined, well, it was, a, it, one person said it, I combined something else. And I actually don't feel no ways about that. I actually just thought it was funny. Okay. And, and it sets up book two. So okay. I really don't feel no way about it. It just was a funny. It was well, crazy because I'm like, I got a journalism degree too. So I'm like, yeah. man. I, but I will say, um, the, the, those, they congratulated me on making the list. Okay, okay. So, as long as they wasn't a hater. No, okay. it was it was concern. I get it. Major in journalism can go either way, so okay. I understood it. But I had to put that in there because. But McDonald's, though, I mean, you just you just trying to hold me, like. Yeah, hey. it was it was a funny. You know, point. they probably went to the to the extreme to try to get you to show maybe it's it's a chance to go elsewhere. You gonna be working at McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like damn, you that's the me, one you gonna throw at me? You gave me Chick Fil A at least. <laughs> Hey, Target, sh- but it's fine. Go <laughs> we'll make it work. Oh yeah, you make it work at the Target. Oh shit. So man, but yeah, we can go ahead and wrap it up, man. We appreciate you coming. No, through. thank you for having me. You know what I mean, Michael Arsenal. Listen, make sure you get the book. I can't date Jesus. Love, sex, family, race, and other reasons <laughs> why I put back my faith prices in Beyonce. Very affordable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sure. <laughs> it's like Twelve, thirteen dollars. You know, what Amazon or get buy you some that knowledge. Yes. Thank yeah. you. For sure. For sure. So. We're going to go ahead and get up out of here, man. It's your boy, Donnie Houston. What they talking about podcast? We out. Boom, buck, lad. Donnie Houston. Man, cuz it's going down. It's really going down. It takes time ticket, baby. What's up? You know we real. Because you know how we do it on this side. We wreck it.